In the last week or so, I've noticed that a lot of people are talking about embedding video into their Adobe Captivate project. Uh, I've seen this on the Adobe eLearning forum uh, or Adobe eLearning community, as well as within the comments of some of my own YouTube channel videos. And one of the things that concerns me is that people are talking about in embedding video, um, you know, and they're referring to uh, videos that are hundreds of megabytes in size, if not even several gigabytes in size. And I just wanted to spend some time in this video today and show you what you need to know about encoding your multimedia for use within Adobe Captivate. So I have Captivate open on my desktop here. Let me just enlarge it here. And uh, previously I recorded a video of just me playing a video game on my computer. And I'll show you uh, what would happen if I simply insert that video as it stands into my Adobe Captivate course. I could choose either event video or multi-slide synchronized video. I myself prefer uh, multi-slide synchronized video because it is um, synchronous to the rest of your project, uh, whereas event video is asynchronous. But let's find that video. And we'll just uh, have it on the single slide. So if I take this back and you can see that the video is, uh, well, I'd say uh, pretty close to double uh, the resolution of my stage. So this project, I think it was 1024 by um, 768 or something along those lines there. And you can see the video is much larger than that. Now, of course, I can always um, resize the video if I hold down my shift key so as to not change the aspect ratio of the video. I can have it fit on the stage itself. Let me just, you know, make this fit the screen here. And that works well, and I can use my alignment toolbar to position it and everything. But the reality is, is that this video, which is only a few, uh, maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds long, is f over 50 megabytes in size. It's huge. If I was to save this project and publish this project, this would be a tremendous strain on my e-learning project's ability to either uh, play over the internet or play over a company intranet uh, and would have uh, quite an impact on the network and certainly reduce the user experience for anyone trying to complete the course. If you have a video this size, my advice to you would be to choose some sort of streaming methodology, such as YouTube or Vimeo or even Adobe streaming video uh, service would be a good choice as well. But if for whatever reason you absolutely need this to be embedded in your e-learning course, my advice would be to uh, do what you can to optimize that video and a great tool actually comes included with Adobe Captivate and that's Adobe Media um, Encoder and it comes with Captivate. Now you might see a different version than what I'm running here because I have the Adobe Creative Cloud. I get Media Encoder uh, CC 2017 um, but they all essentially do the same thing. Let me just clear out what's what's here right now. So if I wanted to convert this video, this uh, this video file that, uh, let's get exact numbers here, almost 53 megabytes in size to something a lot more manageable, I can drag it into the media encoder and it's going to show up in the queue. I can close this folder for the time being. And there's a, a whole series of presets that you can select. So if you wanted to choose something more optimized for the web, you can choose these options here. Uh, alternatively, you can click on the format type, currently set for H.264, which in of, in of itself is fine, but you might want to do some things to optimize this video. The first thing is, is that the video actually is longer than I need it to be. It's 48 seconds long. And the first couple of seconds are unnecessary. They don't contribute to this video at all. So I can just move this little selection handle over till I get to a point where it's just about where I want it. 
right there is good. So I've shortened the video a little bit. That's going to help somewhat. And over here on the export settings section, you're going to see two tabs. Now I generally don't do anything beyond these two tabs. You certainly can explore what they are and, and determine uh, what functionality might be of benefit to you. But there's a couple of things right off the bat. First of all, that video was way too large for the size of e-learning that my Captivate course is. So one of the things I can do is I can uncheck the um, the preset option for the, the width and the height, and I can change those settings. So I could make this say, uh, let's reduce it down to about 750 uh, pixels uh, by about 422. I also could reduce the frame rate, although I would caution with a video like this, this is a video game, there's a lot of action going on. Uh, reducing the frame rate might not have a, a great uh, a great experience for the end user. You could switch it from progressive to uh, one of the two uh, interlaced formats, upper first or lower first. Uh, I don't know if there's much of a difference in the quality because of that, but that might reduce the file size. Uh, I'll try upper first and we'll see what kind of impact that has to the quality. You also could choose to change the aspect ratio. So for example, if you wanted to choose uh, an aspect ratio that was more appropriate for a certain uh, television style or something like that, you could choose, you know, widescreen 16 by 9 or something like that. Um, or we'll just leave it the way it is for now. I don't want to change its aspect ratio because then you'll be introducing black bars either beside or above and below the picture. Um, I generally leave profile and level alone. Those defaults seem to be fine. But what you can do is you can play around with the bitrate settings. Now bitrate is probably going to have the biggest impact on the uh, resulting file size of your new video. Um, if you were to choose a constant bitrate, and then you could set something lower than what it already is. So you could say something like 4 uh, megabits per second. And that's going to greatly reduce the file size. Now, of course, you got to be careful as you get to these lower bit rates, you're going to affect the quality of the video. Uh, another choice that might be more advantageous is that you can choose a variable bit rate. In other words, it will still have a target bit rate of, say, 4 megabits per second, but you can give it an upper limit in the event that it needs to increase the bit rate. Uh, because of the amount of action on screen or, or something like that. If you choose the two-pass method, I think you'll get better results. So we can increase this maximum bit rate to, let's say, 6 megabits per second. And then we can, uh, we can go ahead and try to improve this. You could uh, adjust the keyframe distance. Um, we could try, say, 50. Uh, or actually, let's go up in the other direction, actually. Keyframes are, are the times within a video where the video redraws the entire screen rather than just redrawing something that's changed from the last frame. Uh, widening the distance between keyframes might reduce the overall file size as well. So let's try 90, see how that works. I'm going to click on OK. And of course now it's got the custom option under the presets there. Let's go ahead and run this and see what the effects are on not only the file size, but the overall quality of the video as well. And as you can see down below here, you get a preview of the video. So we're just about done now, and um, it's done the second pass to hopefully improve the overall quality based on the variable bit rate that we selected. And so now the video is done. Let's take a look at the file. So we've managed to reduce this file size from the 52 megabytes, almost 53 megabytes that it originally was, down to just below 23 megabytes, 22.8 actually, to be precise. Let's take a look at the original quality of the video. So here's our video. 
looks good. Obviously, this is a full HD resolution video recording the video game that I was playing earlier. And, you know, it looks pretty much what you would expect a Star Wars video game to look like. Let's take a look at the uh, the file si the file that's been reduced in file size, and see how it compares. It's uh, literally half the original file size. So so I can notice a difference. I, I can see the interlace effect. Uh, maybe I might try it with uh, with the progressive still turned on, but I think you know for an e-learning course This certainly would be adequate and in fact I could probably reduce it even further and And maybe even get even a smaller video size and therefore a smaller file size Again, you have to think about your end users because of course it, you know you could have a really tremendous video quality but if the users are sitting there waiting for it to load, uh, then there's really not much advantage that, that that fantastic quality really does offer. Guys, if you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. You can visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.